An eight-year-old girl also looks puzzled. It looks as if this problem will defeat her as well. But after one and a half minutes, inspiration strikes. Scientists believe that younger children fail because they can only see one way to solve the problem. By the age of eight, most children can expand their thinking and find a solution. But how do we compare to an adult ape? The researchers bring the apparatus to Leipzig Zoo to see if orangutans can solve the same problem. An orangutan and her infant enter the room with the test apparatus. She can get water from a tap. She doesn't need a jug. She takes a mouthful of water from the fountain, returns and spits it into the tube. Another mouthful of water and the peanut floats to the surface. She grabs it. Orangutans are the champions at cracking this problem. All the orangutans they tested at Leipzig Zoo solved it. Even the three-year-old only needs to see it a few times to get the idea. When researchers tested chimpanzees, one found an even more ingenious solution. Chimps aren't too fussy when food is involved. It's clear that apes have the ingenuity to solve problems. But the way they get the peanut reveals another astonishing ability. They use the water almost like it's a tool. Are apes inventors? Tools are an essential part of our everyday life. For years, the classic textbook definition of humans was man the toolmaker. We were said to be the only species that used tools. For two and a half million years, we have hammered and forged implements from the earth. We manufactured amazingly complex tools and with them created the modern world. Surely our tool-making ability makes us unique. But in the 1960s, researchers discovered chimpanzees laying sticks across ant trails to make ant kebabs. And they use leaves as sponges to mop up water for drinking. But these are simple tools, nothing like our complex tool making. So can apes fashion tools and use them in a complex way like humans? Cricket Sands and Dave Morgan of the Wildlife Conservation Society are on an expedition to one of the remotest parts of Africa, the Gualogo Triangle, in the Republic of Congo. For the last six years, they've been coming here to study chimpanzees in the wild. Sands and Morgan are looking for signs of chimpanzee tool use. They suspect that chimps have reached a far higher level of sophistication in fashioning tools than we currently believe. On the edge of a forest trail, they spot some sticks lying on a termite's nest. Scientists have known for years that chimps use sticks to catch termites. What's unusual here is that there's evidence of different types of tools. Sands and Morgan need to know if the chimps are responsible. They set up a series of hidden cameras and wait. 
Two days later, a group of chimpanzees triggers one of the cameras. Despite their efforts to hide it, the chimpanzees have spotted it. It's probably the first man-made object they've seen, and they're curious. One chimpanzee even makes a tool to probe the camera. Over the next few months, triggered by heat, the cameras will capture anything that comes into range. Back at camp, Sands and Morgan review the tapes. The results are astonishing. They show for the first time chimps using two different tools as they forage for food. You can see several individuals arriving on the scene, several with tools in their mouths they're carrying to the, the termite ne nest. And look at he's got the end of his the end of the tool, he's pressing on it with his foot, trying to push it into the ground as far as he can. You can see he modifies the tip of his digging stick there to make it a sharper point, and now he inserts it into the nest. Quite oftentimes, though, we think that they actually know that they've gotten into a nest. The ground may give a little bit, and after they withdraw the stick, they smell the end. And it's quite apparent they may have um, termites, and then they start fishing. The chimps use the large stick to break open the nest. Then the footage reveals the chimps reshaping the second thinner stick. This is an adult female who's actually making a brush tip on a herbaceous herb. She's pulling it through her molars and she's making a nice brush with the end of the tool. She then straightens it and inserts it into the termite nest. No one has filmed this before. Sands and Morgan may have recorded evidence of one of the most astonishing discoveries in chimpanzee behavior. Deep in the Republic of Congo jungle, researchers Cricket Sands and Dave Morgan study chimps to find out if the great apes can solve problems with tools like humans. Their video footage reveals chimps using two different tools to extract termites from a nest. It also shows something even more critical. In fact, it could be the most crucial part of the tool set. So if you just were to insert this blunt end, the termites wouldn't be able to bite as well. Their mandibles just aren't as large as that. They can't grasp around it. But if you make a brush by pulling this through your teeth, even pulling a fiber apart. Then you've made a nice brush and you can insert this into the nest. In tests, Sands and Morgan have found that the brush catches 10 times more termites than a plain stick. And now that we've opened the surface of the nest, we need to follow with a second tool. So you can feel tiny vibrations on the tools as they bite the ends of the, the brush stem. Mm -hmm. Here we have a major soldier, a few workers. Did okay, probably not as good as a chimp. <laughs> After they've got the termites in the young and warm, they'll withdraw them and throw them in the mouth and chew on them very quickly. <laughs> Some very smart chimp invented the brush tip stem tool. They should patent that. I mean, <laughs> it's amazing. It really does increase their efficiency. It's the first time anyone has recorded chimpanzees using two tools with different functions to achieve their goal. Sands and Morgan's research reveals that chimpanzee tool use is far more complex than anyone thought. Sands and Morgan's cameras have captured one more surprising behavior. One thing that's interesting that we hadn't anticipated is that the chimps seem to show some type of planning before they arrive at these nests. So they'll arrive with both the tools of the tool set that they need to accomplish the task, ready to get to work. Planning ahead like this is something we used to think only humans could do. We anticipate what may happen and prepare for it.